We are thrilled to welcome Lee Cronin, founder and CEO of Chemify, to the show today. Thank you once again for joining us. It was a pleasure to be with you, even virtually. <laughs> such, such a pleasure. One day we'll we'll get to the in-person podcast, but uh, thanks again, Lee, for, for joining us and having a, a good conversation here. Um, let's just kick things off, Lee. We'd love to start here. Uh, could you just share a brief personal intro with us? Yeah, um, I'm Lee Cronin. I'm the CEO of Chemify. I'm also the Regents Professor of Chemistry at the University of Glasgow. I am trying to digitize chemistry and make aliens. Perfect, perfect intro. A, a man who needs no introduction, who does it perfectly and succinctly there. Thanks again, Lee, for joining us. It's just so excited to dive in here. As we're going in, I think I, I just want to take a deep dive here into the origin story and just start. Uh, so last year, I mean, you founded Chemify with a mission to enable full stock digitization of chemistry from code to molecules and, and vice versa. I mean, really for molecular discovery, optimization and synthesis. Um, some amazing ambitious goals as we're talking about space and your other fantastic work, but just taking a step back from the amazing work, uh, both in thought leadership and research that you've carried through. Um, can you tell us more about the genesis of Chemify itself? You know, what was the, the spark that started it all? Um, I, there are many sparks. I guess the one is this, my enduring question of why biology exists on earth. Right. And, um, and trying to, and I see the, not to talk too much about origin of life and artificial life, but I see that biology is a, uh, a subset of the chemistry that is available in the universe. And so I see it as a search problem. So how do I take the chemistry on planet Earth and search and find the chemistry of biology that's self-sustaining? So I figured, how hard could it be? Um, and rather than having, you know, a, a million PhD students in the lab doing random chemical reactions, I thought I should automate it. And then I realized, and then I got started looking into chemistry automation. And I'm I'm a, I'm a nerd, and I love building computers and writing software and making things not work. That's what I tend to do is tend to get some new technology and break it. And and um, it was really a shock to me that um, chemistry had really not been digitized in any meaningful way. Sure, there was combinatorial chemistry and some flow chemistry and some molecular spectroscopy, but there was no kind of paradigm that joined the abstraction of organic chemistry and molecular discovery to a uniform implementation. I go in software, you call it, you know, the full stack from front end to back end and all the stuff in the middle, it just didn't exist. And so um, I wondered why that was and I started asking questions and everyone just told me what I was wanting to do was impossible and too hard. So I thought that's cool, it, it, definitely gonna do it. That was a genesis. Oh my gosh, yeah, no, of course, as any great journey starts, it's you, you get a no and it's okay, yeah, try me, I love it. Um, so the the start here as we're diving in, I, I think what's fascinating about Chemify is this this really is an entire new way of thinking. Providing a bit of context, I think many of our listeners would be quite familiar with the concepts in the kind of world of biological synthesis. For much of the life sciences space and the sequencing revolution that occurred in the 2000s, um, there have been many solutions broaching this connection from biology to computation, right? Like that that kind of connection there that we've seen in the past two decades, it's not way more, obviously, but what's less clear is this kind of chemistry to computation. And I feel like there's a good intro to Chemify here, um, a world that Chemify really seemed to be seeking to build a solution to. So I just would like to begin more broadly. Could you just explain what you see as the central tenets to computation, as, as you call it? Yeah, okay, that's. I think that's the question. What is computation? You know, I chemists are very good. Like all scientists, we're very good at selling ideas and then doing some work and and, and making work in a narrow sense. We have to, um, and then it will get broader. But what I wanted to ask in general is like, you know, if you go into a chemistry lab now, it doesn't look very different to about 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. In a biology lab, it's completely different. What is the major transformation in biology? Well, it's obviously been molecular biology and the understanding of sequencing and the tools that you use to basically uh, work with uh, at the, the molecular biological level. And chemistry is a bit harder because it's all cooking. And so, you know, it's like, there it seems to be a zillion different chemical reagents. There seems to be a zillion different processes. There seems to be a zillion different ways of doing things. And what I realized 
actually when I'm starting to think about the search problem and could I set up a search engine is that actually it wasn't that broad. And so computation is, and also there's something else I should say that there's this kind of expectation that chemistry when you do it, it's not always gonna work, even though the, 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 the procedure you've got is good, right? It should work. And so like, astronomy is really odd. Um, because if you if you if someone was to give you a computer and you would run a program on that computer and you give it some data, and as long as it wasn't some kind of weird stochastic parrot LLM, we can talk about those later, just a normal kind of program running on the computer, put the data in, run the program, get the answer. And if you ran that on any computer with the same program with the same data, you get the same answer. So that's computation. That's kind of the definition of computation. So computation is the idea that you could take standard hardware, whatever that would be, the computer, some input chemicals and a code and make the same molecule every time reliably on demand. And that's really the, the basis of computation. It goes a bit further. It isn't just about making molecules. It's about doing reactions and setting up complex reactions for other things rather than just one molecule. You can make 10, 1,000. Hell, one day we might be able to make a cell. And so computation is does for chemistry what computation does for mathematics. So what does computation do for mathematics? It makes vast calculations accessible by a human by having to spend years not m missing a digit. Computation does the same thing for chemistry. At least that is the grand ambition in, yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, it's it's almost it's bringing it down to its core components uh, in a way the, the the simplest digits. I, I think it's fantastic how far you've come with Chemify, and it's it's great to see how you all are realizing that vision. Um, further separating this before we dive in, because I think that was a fantastic grouping of computation and some of the fundamentals on the side. As a deeper question, just going even further, connecting this just back to bio and computation, potentially from your perspective, could we try to separate the two in a way? You know, what's different between these two kind of worlds? What what makes them similar? So, I mean, biocomputation is, is it's kind of hard, right? Because um, we are actually in, in molecular biology and digital biology, we are under some illusions. Some of it is digitized and some of it isn't. So, um, but even though biology is harder, it's also easier in some regard because of the fact that you have some, it's possible in a computer to basically take some proteins, look at the structures, work out what DNA sequence and combination of primers is required to turn that DNA into a protein in a cell-free extract, or maybe even a cell. For chemistry, the, a lot of the infrastructure that you, in biology, what works at a nano level, you have a ribosome, is kind of like a glass test tube or round bottom flask, a separator, some pumps and some valves. And so kind of the hardware is a bit bigger. And in biology, you, you tend to simulate what's going on and think about it in very well-defined, narrow uh, um, niches where you, can, where you know that this DNA with this architecture will give you this protein. In the chemistry, you'll say, right, these reagents and this hardware might give you the molecule, but actually it's kind of top down. If you like, the chemist is kind of willing pushing, squeezing, right temperature, right surface area, right catalyst, pray a bit, chemistry works. Whereas in molecular biology and say in computational biology, you work out exactly what maybe inhibitor you want to put, what, what sequence of nucleic acids you want to design to, to block something or promote something. You then make them, you then put them in the ribosome and away they go from the bottom up. And so the error correction in biology is built in by evolution, right? So you, it knows what to do. The error correction in chemistry is the organic chemist going, oh my God, it's turning black. Oh, well, temperature is too high. Oh, I need to do a separation. Oh, I need to do chromatography. So it's kind, of, it's kind of a different thing. And what computation is, it's so for me, it's actually a, a brand new robotics paradigm it's the first time in a way, or maybe not the first, let's say one of the first times where the computation process is actually physically embodied in a in the robot doing the thing. Mm -hmm. So and this is very technical if you're a computer scientist, but super important for verifiability. If you want to make sure that no one steals your code, 
Whereas robots today, we kind of give them a script and they'll do their thing and sure, we'll check and we'll maybe have a digital twin. But the act of actually computing requires a physical reactor, a physical separator, a physical set of inputs. So you've kind of got this hybrid computer, which is an, another big difference where if you do computational biology, it's probably all digital. And then you'll put some reagents together, everything go away, and then you'll let them be separated. And you might have a physical process going on in an Eppendorf or in a cell you've pre-configured, and it can be quite separate to what you've imagined in the computer. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's, I'm kind of showing how they're similar, but kind of separated by the scale and the abstraction. No, they, they, they line up completely. And I, I think what's fascinating from your approach as well is even just the directional approach in a way, right? I mean, biology in a sense is kind of bottom up. Chemistry can at times be top down. Um, and so even those fundamental differences, I think, are fascinating from, from your start here, Lee. I think that's great. While we're continuing this conversation, I think what would be important is I, I want to transition this now into a bit deeper into life sciences and how Chemify is approaching this. And so mm -hmm. We, we talk about what Chemify is creating in its essence. And I mean, I think I'd love to just start here. If you could just provide context for our audience and just share more about the difficulties of drug discovery development space when it comes to chemical synthesis. There are a lot of key unmet needs in the space, but I'd be curious to see from your perspective, the ones that you see that are, are, are bleeding from a, from a chemical synthesis perspective. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the intersection of Chemify and life sciences is is very big and from one degree one day it's a life sciences company the next day it's an underpinning infrastructure company for chemistry and life sciences but let's go from the life sciences viewpoint because obviously that lots of people interested in that i think right now and also i want to one day just one aside chemify is going to be our molecules that are so big today they're only made by fermentation or in a cell and and it's a bit like the way the compute arithmetic depth in a computer, you would never do a calculation that big, even on a mechanical calculator 70 years ago, it'd be insane. You wouldn't make a, pro, a, a molecule the size of an antibody. You would actually build that in a, in a living system, turn it over, right? You would actually grow them. You wouldn't chemically synthesize them bond by bond. Biology does, but Chemify one day, I mean, hell, we'll be able to synthesize memories if you, if you pay us enough, right? Good memories on demand. I'm sure that won't mess up the world too much. But going back to your point, the main main point is that um, in, in, in biology, there is this real prospect now with the molecular technology tools and the advances in, say, connecting protein sequence from structure with, with, with you know, machine learning methods and other methods, alpha fold and so on, that there is this just vast space of possible new chemical entities that, that could basically be used to control um, biological processes in the cell and all sorts of things, pre-disease, post-disease, network effects and so on. So the concept of drug discovery is going to expand vastly. But there are a number of issues. The first issue is that chemical space is like bigger than outer space. I can't say that enough. It's the best thing ever. If you look at the number of stars that are in the universe, there's about one mole, that's one times 10 to the 23. If you take 18 milliliters of water, that is one mole, there's 10 to the 23 molecules in 18 milliliters. So in a shot glass, there's basically as many molecules as there are stars in the universe. When you start to think about chemistry, there's literally 10 to the 100, whatever, right? It, the number of molecules is huge. Yet humanity has only really gone through systematically a few hundred million molecules and made them for real and characterized them for real. Yes, CROs can make you billions on paper. Yes, compound libraries have billions on paper, but the number of characterized molecules is in the hundreds of millions. The number of drugs, small molecule drugs known is in the 3000s or actually 2,780. Why is this? Well, Drug discovery is actually trial and error. And I know there'll be lots of people listening and shouting at me saying, no, I've discovered one with my AI. And I'll be like, no, you haven't. You might do soon. You haven't done yet. I think the closest we've got to it, we have got, we're getting close. There are some that are coming through. And so what Chemify wants to do is accelerate this biochemical molecular discovery and drug discovery and say, hey, you've got this perfect kind of simulator that could dream up all sorts of molecules that could basically address your need theoretically. So you have these graphs, these are pictures of molecules, they are a dream, right? 
And so the big problem right now, or the big problem in the past used to be dreaming those molecules. Now we can dream them. There's an, so many interesting companies coming through right now looking at particular areas of disease. They have particular assay assets, but they're dreaming up these molecules. They're in the computer memory and they're trapped in the computer memory. How do you get them out of the computer memory into reality? Well, you have to get some poor chemist out of the basement. It's a bit like Pulp Fiction, right? So kind of <laughs> come on out of the basement, go and make the molecule. And so it, 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 it's hard to do that. And so what Chemify wants to do is connect the AI dream um, to the molecular synthesis. And basically, so you can go from dream to candidate, you can test your assay, so that wasn't quite good or that was good, put round and go around this loop where you have this process of generating hits, making them for real. So turning the graph into a real molecule, testing it in your, in your biochemical or even more advanced assay, getting some data out, inferring your design process and going out that loop. And Chemify is determined to make that loop happen for real with as many partners as we can find and eventually ourselves. But I think the problem space is so big, we can do that. So that's one point. The other point is the vast amounts of literature that these companies are working on don't work. So there's all this chemistry that's like 200 years. It's not all workable. Now, are chemists all charlatans and be making it all up? No, it's just that the, they're flawed and it's kind of analog and you have to redo it again. It's a bit like going back to the time of the computer revolution where you were getting some a new technique working and you hadn't quite coded it properly before the phenomena of using software repositories like GitLab and GitHub. So there's kind of no GitLab and GitHub for chemistry uh, in that regard. So, so we're kind of doing that. And then also we're learning how to make new molecules that interact with biomolecules. And also we take molecules that only are normally made by, by biology, natural products. And now Chemify can start to make in the robot vast numbers of natural products you could only get out of small amounts of biology or dream of fermenting or doing some kind of genetic engineering. So there's quite a lot there. So I think there's AI dreams, there is testing new hypotheses, and there's basically supercharging biochemical. The last thing I'll say before I stop is this idea of doing modification of complex biomolecules, where you have this wonderful synergy where you might actually insert a gene into your favorite chassis. It produces a protein that then produces an interesting secondary metabolite or some other complex molecule. And then we go, right, we'll take that, do some uh, uh, some new chemistry on that and chemify platform, put it back into biology. So you can almost have this kind of artificial organelle that is the computer, it's a bit big, that can do chemistry that you would not be able to do in a cell, but get that molecule back into the cell quickly. So really we just expand that toolbox yeah, I, I love the conceptual aspect of Chemify, what it's pulling together. There, there's so much to bring together, like the full stack digitization of chemistry to make this happen for discovery, optimization, um, to make this process, as you said, significantly faster, more reproducible, scalable, and just organized is, is a fantastic vision. Taking it from the conceptual aspect down to what you're doing with Chemify now, I'd be really curious to ask directly, can you just tell us a bit more about the Chemify solution and how it addresses some of these challenges, the bigger systemic questions that we asked there? And, you know, how, how did you arrive at this Chemify solution that that's kind of present today that you're building right now? Yeah, I don't, I mean, there's, it's kind of like, I think the problem is by telling the story a couple of times, I put myself through some kind of cognitive behavioral therapy and I change it every time, it sounds better. But, but no, I mean, I invented the programming, I invented a programming language for chemistry first because I got very frustrated that um, I wasn't able re to reproduce my own re research. And I have a brilliant team and they were, they're highly dedicated and, and I thought it would be fun one day to basically say, I wish you were all remote control. So it's like, come on. So I was very politically incorrect even back then. I think it was in 2012 to 2013. And so what I mean is you all, I want you to have autonomy, but wouldn't it be great if we had a set of standards like where is the station to go and weigh stuff? Where do you set up your reaction? Where do you get your safety materials, blah, 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 and go through and do it in a signed sequence? So I kind of wrote this programming language um, for chemistry. Um, and everyone was like, I'm not going to follow that. I'm, 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 I'm autonomous. You know, it's a bit like, asking people to put masks on during lockdown. If they didn't understand why they were doing it and you're just being told to do stuff, you'd be like rebellion, right? Not because you're silly, just you're rebellion, right? Even smart people rebel, right? Uh, you know, everybody rebels. Um, 
And so they rebelled a bit and I said, okay, let's not do that. Let's come up with some automation that can help you get rid of the labor in the lab, get rid of the boring bits and the dangerous bits. And they said, that's great, we'll build those. And then I said, ah, oh, I've got this programming language as well. And they were like, kind of angry, but then they adopted it and made it theirs. And suddenly we started to have this, the genesis of what really Chemify is doing to change chemistry. So, you know, it's all great to have the word computation. And I think hopefully, but when most people finish listening to this, they'll see that computation is just a made up, isn't a made up word. It is a term given to the phenomena of turning code into molecules or code into reactions in the same way that computation turns data through mathematical operations into, into desired outcomes through computation. Great. So what does that actually mean? Well, you have a programming language that runs on an operating system. That operating system understands your resources. How much memory do you have in a computer? So you, you can't do a calculation that's too big. So when I give it some you know, reaction to do, it goes, how big is the flask? If the flask, if the if you're trying to put a liter of solvent into your flask, it's only 500 mils. It will say fail and correct it for you. So what you do is you take the principles of computer science into chemistry and basically take your high level uh, um, abstraction, which might be make ibuprofen or make you know make I don't know taxol or or make some kind of you know make insulin. Say so, right, that's great. What reagents do you have available? Okay, can I turn reagents into insulin? I find a path for that. So the, so the Chemify process is this. At the top, what you abstractly want to do. Typically, it's either, it might be make a molecule, investigate a reaction, set up um, the, the form the, a formula, formulation. Nice thing about Chemify is like, we're not just about making molecules. We can make formulations. We can make quite complex um, processes. It's a chemical process language. So make abs aspirin, say, right, great. What's the next step? Well, we need to know what chemicals you have available and what routes are possible to get your target. Determine that, great. So you match from top to next, and you say, right, what hardware do you have? Do you, can you heat to 120 degrees? Do you have a solvent? Match, great, can do. Okay, run time, add them in, run them. How long does it go to stop? Do I have a checkpoint so I can check that it's not going too fast, not going too slow, great. And what you do is you go from this abstraction level to the actual molecule in the flask, pure, hopefully on demand. And that's the thing you do. So Chemify kind of took that concept from my laboratory where we invented computation and is now operationalizing it. And I guess what we're doing is to, the big problem is chemistry servicing biology. And, and we don't want to service biology. We want to help life sciences and drug discovery and biochemical um, we want to be integrated into the landscape in the same way you might design a gene, you design a molecule, right? I want to make it as easy for people to get molecules as they can genes, like just a few days. So what we do is people then say, okay, um, I, I, Chemify is operationalized this so that we are basically, right now we're about five to 10 times faster than the average chemist. And we are aiming at 100% reproducibility where the average chemist, they're human, and some things fail. So the main thing we've got is this new stack. So it goes from top to bottom. We can go 10 times faster in order of magnitude. And when, we know, when we've got us going faster, we, can't, we don't fail unless there's a mechanical failure we know and do it again. So this all means you can more reliably go deeper into chemical space than before. This means you can design more complex molecules than you would, you would risk. Because right now there's a bottleneck in chemistry, you really can't go beyond a certain number of steps. You run out of time, you run out of yield. And in drug discovery, getting those candidates to the clinic faster is literally life and death, not just for the company, but for patients and that cycle. And so we're trying to compress all that up and give people access to much more chemical space. And, uh, and hopefully it's going to work. Completely hope so. I think it's I just love the the origin story as well. This was a, a need in your own lab that evolved into something uh, bigger than the sum of its parts, right? And so that that transition was great. Something you you touched on earlier that I think I wanted to bring to the forefront real quick is you talked about the applications within the life sciences space, what you wanted to be uh, broadly going forward. I think the applications in chemical synthesis. Uh, once a company like Chemify can enable a, a code view into chemistry, far extend the applications within drug development and discovery. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah you, you, you've certainly alluded to it, but I think 
asking directly, could you just take a moment before we dive deeper just to describe the applications beyond drug discovery and development that, that you're excited by, enabled by computation? So I, okay, so there's lots and lots and lots. So I'd like to invent a new um, biodegradable polymer systems so I can make new plastics in reverse and there's lots of chemistry needs to be done there. Um, I would like to make new materials for batteries and functional devices, right? I'd like to I'd like to make hybrid inorganic biologies, not now going back to aliens, but actually taking biochemical systems and literally putting a kind of a way of interfacing them electronically so we can get new types of readouts and new types of embedded embodied uh, kind of machinery. And so anything that has, you know, whether it's a dye or a, a, a mini protein or a drug or a candidate for a kind of a new battery anode, Chemify is going to touch there, but it's a lot. And the other thing is that one of the things that I want to be able to do, and I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of the people um, kind of uh, listening to this or watching this will will have sympathy for is a small company. If you try and do everything, you'll end up doing nothing. And so what we're trying to do is pick the the one thing that everyone needs us to do, and demonstrably, if we do it, everyone would be like, "Whoa, the world has changed!" Right? The dent has been made in the universe. And for me, I can imagine, and we'll maybe talk about this later, what, what it will be like in 50 years from now. And what for me is kind of like, when I was starting raising money, I was saying to people, dude, wh why do you want me to go through this nonsense, right? Just give me a billion dollars and I will digitize all the chemistry and we can be able to cure all disease and be done. And they're like, no. And why would they know? It's like, well, because actually there's lots of good ideas out there and the technology is not, is not the only thing we need to figure out is it even feasible if you'd gone back in the computer revolution to 1950 and said hey just give me a trillion dollars and in about 30 years you'll have these things called microprocessors and you might have a phone and you get a satellite and all this stuff but you won't have anything for till then and of course that's not how capitalism works and this bootstrapping and bringing down the reality because right now the big reality is Drug discovery is not getting the molecule it needs. Materials discovery are not getting a consistency in the formulations they need to make. And so I think we can make really big impacts in the environment and help a whole load of companies um, really test their thesis and become successful. And hopefully we can become successful with them. So, so I think going in lots of different verticals is great because everyone needs chemistry. I would say that I'm a boring chemist, right? No, oh, completely. There, there's so many applications too. I, I think it's an amazing illusion to what this could be. And, and we're going to get to the the 50 year longer questions as well. I'm excited to dive in with you, Lee. Before we go there, I think I would love to ask a few questions more around company formation, Chemify, your own journey, your own experience. Uh, I'm just, just curious from your perspective, while we're thinking of the platform holistically, uh, I mean, just Chemify brings together chemists, robotics engineers, biologists, experts in functional discovery, just among so many other touch points in the biopharmaceutical space to make this happen, to turn this into a billion dollar company. Um, as, as you as you want and hope, I mean, as, as someone who has not shied away, uh, even from within your own lab to bring so many stakeholders to the table to look at the space in novel ways and, and approach this solution in a novel way, uh, could you just share more with us about just building interdisciplinary teams? Do you have a mantra? Do you have a thought process around bringing these folks together to make something entirely new? Yeah, it's a kind of fearlessness that I've always had because I know I'm, well, I hope I'm not always the stupidest person in the room, I, but mostly I am. And I've begun to, I kind of, you know, live with it. And it's not, it's not kind of some kind of woe is me story. It's a bit like about the fact I love the problem. I, I care about solving the problem more than I do about looking dignified. Now, what I mean, if you're in a standard discipline and you're going up, it's very hard for the expert to say, I have no idea what's going on here, you know, and, and what you actually do find out when you're doing science and developing new technologies is quite frequently you realize you have no idea what you're talking about. And the quicker you admit that to yourself and go, hey, we need to solve the problem in a different way, the more fun you have. Now, when it came to the computation problem, when I started, because um, I'm a geek, I'm like, any excuse for me to buy some technology, I love it, right? I'd always buy the first PDA. I think I had one of the first, I think I, I had Palm Pilots. I had all sorts of weird small pocket computers and stuff going through. So for me, trying to solve the problem 
I was always very willing to basically take technology. I didn't really understand and ideas. I didn't really know how to put together and put them together and fail openly. And then people would kind of feel sorry for me. Not quite like that and come and join me. I mean, maybe it's not like that. What I actually would do is say, the, the, well, I'll tell you the one thing that happened almost by accident that really changed my career. When I joined Glasgow, Glasgow is one of the top chemistry departments in the world in the 50s and 60s. It still has a great heritage, right? Nobel Prize winners, organic chemistry. And, and the, the department kind of changed over the years. And when I joined, there was a lot of space there. And I was trying to define my group. And I started realizing I needed roboticists in my team. And I just went and hired them. And the university didn't say no. They didn't have a chemistry degree. You couldn't come in. In fact, they encouraged it. Now, in the US, when you go to lots of lots of departments, you if you've got a computer science degree, you try and go into a chemistry department on the graduate program, you won't be allowed. So that means you're separated by a building. Yes, there are special places, MIT Media Lab, a few other places where people get put together, but still they're kind of there in the media labs. So they're not in a chemistry lab. What I was able to do was to get chemists, um, biologists, engineers, computer scientists in one place and say, hey, don't be scared of the chemistry. I'll make sure you don't die because I want you because you're a brilliant computer scientist. Hey, chemist, don't be scared of code. It won't eat you. <laughs> there's a nice rope. There's a nice computer scientist to talk to. And I'd bring them together and very carefully articulate the problem in terms of a vision statement and say, let's just see how well we can do. So we started building our own pumps and valves. We started building our firmware. We started building the operating system. We started building the graph. And I learned so much myself about how to build computer architectures in a chemistry lab with roboticists. And that was kind of the genesis story where the reason why I guess I'm the unique person to form Chemify is I am uniquely able to, to do com design computer architecture, design a programming language, do chemical engineering, do synthetic chemistry. I'm not very good at any of them. Don't be under any illusion, but I know how to do all of them to some degree. And I'm, so I, I'm a kind of N of one with those skills. So like, what can I do with those skills? Oh, build a computer. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I, I think that background and approach is, is, is truly unique. And like, I, I love interrogating that thought process of, of how you got to that standpoint as a, as a unique founder to this approach, but two, two quick questions just before we move on, just thinking about that thought process. Um, even just when you were starting Chemify, this is, you know, moving away from your lab and saying, you know, hey, we're doing this, we're building this computer, we're, we're going to scale this up. Um, could you discuss some of the, even the key design choices or even some of the potential mindset adjustments you and the team made just to improve the setup of Chemify as a really just an entirely new approach to computation? Were there things in culture, company formation, um, beyond the, the initial explanation to the chemist, you know, don't be afraid, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, that, yeah. that is that is a really good question. First thing I did was start. So I kind of I kind of did it broke the mold. And when I went through, and particularly with the market crashing, as I was trying to raise my Series A, because I like raised my seed in or got it finalized in February twenty two, and I was like, no, we're going to raise a Series A now, just in a few months. And the market was going, and I was like, oh, this is great. And so, and people were saying, you need to do this and do this and do this, and I was like, nope, I'm doing it my way. Uh, but what I what I it's not that I wasn't doing it my way and I wasn't going to get a proper team installed. What I realized was absolutely fundamental was I was moving from an academic lab with academic operations, and I needed to get technology, know-how, and people into a new mindset. So I hired some people from my lab, and all lab, right? I didn't want to hire my entire lab. My lab was great doing science. There are some people in the lab who I kept strategically in the lab waiting. And the pandemic helped me to some degree because no one was going anywhere. Also, I had this brand new building being built at the university where half the space was available for me to use to build the company. And I worked in partnership with the company to move, to basically force these worlds together so they would naturally take advantage of one another in an open way. So, all, so there. So stage one at the seed was like, get the people into the company, get the tech into the company, get the know-how and standardize and stop people being creative just for a day or two. Say, so stop being creative for a day. What is the standard computer look like? Standardized, standardized, standardized. Take the programming language that we built in the lab and make the Chemify version of it and standardize that in such a way that our know-how and our kind of the things that we were learning was gonna be built upon, right? Because we had investor money. Investor money is not a research mark, it's investor money. 
invest the money is supposed to grow the company so we can then you know make this really big thing so that was kind of stage one when i was going through the seed they were like to start it so kind of employee number one started in march 2022 and all the other employees came on then in june there was an event where i realized that i was telling myself a lot that i could go from abstraction to programming language to operation and one day we just did it and it just went Someone said, I'm going to make this molecule, spat out the code, put the code in the robot with the chemicals and make the molecule. And I was like, oh gosh, this isn't bullshit. This is going to work. And I don't mean like I thought it was bullshit, but it's like you've always got a leap of faith and you're like, you know, you're not 100% sure it's going to work. And then there was a point in June, I was like, okay, I'm going to bet everything on it. So I said, okay, going to go raise the Series A now and steps and start working on that. But whilst we're doing that, we need to think about operationalization further down the line. Because with the Series A coming, I need to basically start to work how I can get to hyper growth, get customers, and get customers to pay me to increase my technology stack and get to a really powerful company. So that was kind of the stage of the go from. So I say pre seed was kind of like, you know, making sure the idea was like outrageous enough. And also at the same time, if it worked, would have the impact I thought. Great, done that. Then seed, start to build the team, get the technology in, don't be academic, get that all trapped, get it protected, and then prove that you're going to address the market you think you're going to prove. And we had a lot of problems, right, working out where to go. Because everyone's like, we don't believe you can do this. And by the way, what product is it? And what's your product market fit? And I was like, what? I'm a deep tech person. Just give me money and something will happen. And they were like, no. And actually, the contraction of the market and the way that the market responded to me, just like, I'm not giving up. You are going to fund me if I die on my feet here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep listening to what you think the market is going to tell me and adjust. And the nice thing was all the adjustments we had to make impacted the, the technology 0%. What that meant was that I knew we had a technology that was going to address all this stuff. I just knew yeah, I've got everything in the right, in the right, in the right order, if that makes sense. And then, and then obviously, like in late in the summer, late 2022, I was raising the Series A, which was the worst time and the best time. <laughs> uh, because you know, I don't think I didn't think anyone was getting funded, right? And so I really had to get some high conviction investors really figure out how I was going to take the team to the next level because I need to operationalize. And I'm in Glasgow in the UK. I'm not in Silicon Valley. So there's a lot of good things for Glasgow. Brilliant investment in the building, brilliant investment in me, brilliant environment for digital chemistry. So I had to work out how I could preserve, you know, really exploit that and use that and bring a bit of Silicon Valley to Glasgow and build the team. And that's what we started to do. But that was the next stop, step in the story. Oh, certainly. And before we continue on to the story as well, because I want to go into some of the challenges and the successes on, on Chemify thus far, you're certainly not going to be the last company to approach computation, whether successful, unsuccessful in, in you know, the years to come. But um, what you've put together, I think, is, is truly special, Lee. And I think um, interrogating one last time this mindset around building teams and formation around something entirely new. As a pioneer and a, and a founder within the chemical synthesis space, do you really have advice for future founders on the key design choices to kind of get it right at the early stage within computation? I mean, I mean yeah, yeah. I mean, let me come. Yeah. So I think I didn't entirely answer. I answered a bit of the question about it, the, uh, the interdisciplinary, but not the design choices. Yeah. So yeah. I the design choices actually were quite bizarre in that um, because I designed my first computer when I was computer, not computer, computer, when I was seven years old. And I did it on tracing paper and I had about hundred layers of tracing paper and I drew the, um, the actual architecture, the processor, the memory or the shift registers. And what I would do is I put, you know, um, I represent ones and zeros and other bits of information on the tracing paper and fold them. And so I could see how, what would, what would a kind of state machine. So a state machine required you to be able to take objects and change their state. And when I was building a computer, I was like, I don't, I mean, look, I don't, I'm no, I'm no, I'm not particularly smart. So I have to steal ideas from other people. It's like, why don't I take a Turing machine type architecture and make a chem make a computer do make chemistry like that? Because what I observed in the lab is everyone does reactions in a flask, one round bottom flask, not in flow. So it's like it could be analog, like flow all the time, or digital, on, off, pump in, pump out. 
So first design decision I made, which was kind of amazingly lucky, was I decided I would make a chemical state machine um, that was basically like a Turing machine, have states react on, off, it would map exactly like I would think of a computer. And so the, the kind of computer architecture analogy would hold. That was kind of number one. Number two, because I'm a control freak and I don't, and I don't like being stupid, I, what I do is I take everything apart. So I work out how it works and I rebuild it. So I built my own pumps and valves and my group went crazy. You're doing the electronics. You don't know what you're doing. You're building pumps. Hamilton syringes exist. What are you doing? Stupid. I was like, no, no, no. If I know how to connect my syringe to my round bottom flask, I'm going to make a chemical transistor. Chemical tra So a transistor in a computer is a, when you, you can use those to make NAND gates. Make a NAND gate, you can make everything else. It's like, if I can make a little thing that would start a reaction, stop a reaction, purify the material in one little box, that's all of chemistry in a box, computation, one unit of. So that was the next step, basically. So I went from state machine to building some electronics. The other then design idea was to make things modular and connect them. And then I just listened to lots of people, you know, I, and I, I, I listened to lots of people thinking about driving down the cost and, it, and I kind of, whether it was Eric Schmidt or Elon Musk and all these gar, you know, guys who say, and I was like, I realized that capitalism was about kind of three things, <laughs> speed, scale, scalability and cost, and maybe reliability, right? I was like, ah, so if, if computation doesn't scale, not gonna work. If I can't drive down the cost, not gonna work. If I'm not gonna make it more reliable, not gonna work. So maybe I should take the, my head out of my ass and actually make sure I'm addressing these things. So that was the next set of architectural decisions I made pretty much on my own. And then as a team came through, they adopted those and then we've just rapidly now operationalized it. So more of the team members have come in, have done far more to logistics operationalization than I have. But and they haven't, and the one thing that we have to preserve is our standard programming language. That's kind of our open secret. Everybody in the world knows we've got one, not everyone in the world knows what it means. Obviously, we're being very precious about what the Chemify process is, because that is our very big advantage. It's taking us 10 years to build and $30 million, and now we have X amount more to build on that, and we've got to rap rapidly iterate. So the other thing I've done, which is say, is we've rapidly iterated through these design problems, through different designs, and I must say, it's made me sad that some of my best academic ideas that help me invent computation we have actually removed from the Chemify standard. And I'm not gonna tell you which ones they are because it's top secret in a way, but the, for me as a founder realizing I had to let go of something I thought was really cool and the best technology ever when it wasn't getting me reliability, scalability and re reduction in cost, I had to just be really sober and go, yeah, that's gone because computation is gonna work if we do that and it's gonna scale. And so I've learned a lot in the last six months, like more than, yeah. It's I can imagine. No, I, I, I could seriously imagine. And, and working on this for so long, you have the funding you have to to cut to the core components, as you said. I think it's great to see Chemify was built out of necessity and then adding the layer of how is this going to work on a scalable fashion? I, it's just really great to see from your, your mental model, Lee. Continuing this on, I want to take a quick moment to take a step back, talk about some of the major challenges, accomplishments through Chemify and you know address them directly. You all have found incredible success in your growth recently, and the team scaled up uh, so well in the past few months here. Looking back, I mean, what have been some of the greatest challenges you faced at Chemify thus far? First challenge was convincing people I wasn't mad <laughs> and or making it up. I kind of got quite offended when people compared me with Elizabeth Holmes because, like, I've just turned 50, like, this month. I'm not happy about it. Who's happy about it? But, you know, it's fine. I kind of, I love, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. It's great. But um, when people will kind of say, oh, you know, you're just making it up. I'm like, well, I have been a chemistry professor for 20 years. I have published, you know, almost 550 papers. And sure, Elizabeth Holmes, she, it was annoying that she made stuff up, but she didn't really, she, you know, I've been openly developing this technology. So that was one challenge. And actually I didn't hold it events anyone. It was just kind of, it happened a lot. So that was one thing, but I think it was more the fact that the, that I'm not a typical startup founder. You know, I'm I'm not in and and we not in a typical environment, which we actually I'm set, I'm pretty pleased because the University of Glasgow has been absolutely brilliant. 
I can't fault them in what they've been doing. And they're not doing it just for me. They're going to create an ecosystem in the university, in the new campus. And hopefully, like Chemify, will be the smallest unicorn. It will be the first. <laughs> so that's fine. So my idea is to be the first, but be the smallest, because we'll just help a load of other be even better. So um, that was one. So being in Glasgow, being a chemistry professor, people not really thinking I necessarily had the killer instinct. I did have a company before, which I won't talk too much here. So I learned a little bit there. And also I realized I had to basically take control and I had to put my money where my, well, not just my money where my mouth is, because obviously investors had to help me there, but really put my effort and my, and my, um, uh, my, my work. There's lots of people who are doing, you know, academics who start many companies and kind of float above them. I'm operating this. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO, I'm running the company. It, my head is on the line with the investors. My head is on the line, make sure the employees are okay. So it's kind of that. The other challenge was really convincing people that I was able to learn rapidly enough and uh, that, you know, that I wasn't going to be stuck in my ways and just doing academic stuff and like, you know, or going. And that's not saying academics can't start companies. Of course they can. But there is a lot of different barriers. Um, and But then a lot of the investors we've got, we've got brilliant investors who realized I do learn rapidly because I was not going to leave the, the going back to the Bay Area every two weeks until they gave me a check, right? And I was going to listen to their feedback, and you know, you're not. We're not going to fund you. Why is that? Well, we, we, you know, you're not going to do this, this, and this. I'm like, okay, if I do this, this, and this, will you fund me? Oh, okay, maybe. So I go away, and do this, this, and this, and then they come back. Okay, that would they find another reason. But the thing is, overall, I was getting good feedback from great investors, and some of those investors became supporters, high conviction, and came in. So I had to overcome each of those steps one by one. The biggest problem. We believe you're going to make chemistry. We believe you're going to be the Amazon, the Google, whatever you want for chemistry. How are you going to make money in the short term? The biggest problem. Are you a software play? Are you a hardware play? Are you, you know, what are you? Understanding what we were and figuring that out with the market and getting feedback was so hard. But that's where the investors actually, um, and they know who they are, basically helped me and not all of them they didn't all invest right the same before but some of them connected me with their companies we found their unmet needs and start to find what we could do and that's amazing listening to those investors leaving those environments that problem i had no idea where to target i just listened to what people told me they wanted and went can we do that sure we can actually that's kind of cool that's almost easy let's keep doing that so that's i think now we know we have product market fit <laughs> We just have to make sure the technology works, but that's fine. That's a, that's actually an engineering problem and a scale problem. So I'm so excited because, okay, I'm not saying we can't fail, but I think we have a very high chance of having some fun, giving the investors some fun as well, and really kind of opening up this whole area. And sure, we won't be the last digital chemistry company. There'll be many out there. It's just that we're going to help all of them, right? What, I don't see it as a is a duel to the death. I see it as there's so much chemical space. How many people can we help? Can we get paid to help people? Can we add value? Can we accelerate drug discovery? Can we cure Alzheimer's, cancer, Parkinson's? Can we basically intercept, you know, disease? Can we come up with new epigenetic pro reprogramming molecules? You know, what can we do? So I, I think those are all the challenges. I will think of more, but I think that's quite a large number in sequence. As you were saying, they're, they're, you're certainly not going to be the last one, but I think your your framework, your mental model around approaching this entirely new field is is fantastic. And I hope for founders to come, it's 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 useful. Um, even if you're not in uh, chemical synthesis or growing in this space, it's it's a great mental model for approaching new ventures. Um, but uh, just flipping it real quick uh, as 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 a question, you know, we we got to chat a bit more about product market fit and some of the successes you had, but want to leave it open for you, Lee, if you wanted to share anything else on that same note. Uh, what have been some of the greatest accomplishments or milestones that you've kind of reached through Chemify? Anything more that you'd want to share on great notes, good things that happen, good successes? Um, just I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not very good at blowing my own trumpet about what we've done in the past. <laughs> I know what we're going to do in the next three weeks is going to be amazing. It's really Certainly. funny. Um, one, so what I really like is not only bringing this interdisciplinary team together, but the cross functionality that we have, where we have a unique bunch of chemists, software engineers, um, engineers, chem informaticians, that, and they're just beginning to understand 
how they can glue each other together and they can help them. I mean, you know, having a software engineer in a chemistry lab next to a fume hood, not being scared of the reaction and say, right, we need to connect that. This is the infinite flow. So kind of seeing the software actually work in a couple of weeks, like when it was a dream and it was insurmountable was amazing. Getting the hardware revert revisions to work and getting the cheminformatics to work at the same time, all of them humming together so that you can dream your molecule and then make it on pretty much on demand. Yeah, it's mind blowing. I mean, it's gonna work. It's kind of cool. And I probably should be saying it because I want to keep it secret long enough so we have a big enough head start. But I think still people think it's fantastical enough. But I think, we, and also the nice thing is we've found a niche where we're not really competing with anyone. We're not competing with CROs, we're not competing with the AI things. We're actually, we can help everyone, you know? And I think what we've got to do is find the right pattern of partners and customers. And and so so that's really surprised me. The other thing that's surprised me is, um, uh, is that I have had to, for me, compartmentalize how I'm an academic, mm -hmm. how I run a research group, and how I and how I kind of run a team. And I've realized that running the team is not even more collaborative, but it is, right? Because it's really about sharing the goals and sharing the deadlines, not me dictatorially saying, you know, you must bring a kitchen sink into the lab and say, right, I've now brought a kitchen sink, or you do this or else, is to actually make sure that we have the right culture and that everyone shares the vision and we're willing to run at it and help each other and be able to take part in that with the team that I have and, and really get support because we've brought, brought in experts from Silicon Valley, investors, also operatives, and bringing new people in has just transformed. And I'm just proud that I'm able to convince people to come and join us, right? That it isn't a, isn't a joke. And I know it might seem silly. Of course, it's not a joke. But when you're starting a company, it's really scary because maybe it's a joke. Maybe you're delusional. And sure, you are a delusional a bit. But, you know, can you really get the best people willing to work with you on this outrageous, audacious problem and not run away with their pants on fire? And they're not running away with their pants on fire. They're actually coming. And so that's kind of cool. Completely. And it, it, it must be so exciting for someone who's worked on this for so long, that's had this vision that part of it is is truly actualizing. So I'm just, just so happy for you and the team that this is coming together in the way you wanted, Lee. And um, the next logical question here that I, that I wanted to ask and just, just up front, you know, what's coming next for Chemify? What do you want to see or what should our followers kind of think of or listen to you for the next uh, six months, you know, next year to come in the future ahead to, to follow along with you? So I think the major thing is the company's going to grow quite rapidly. We're, our technology will be established. We'll be able to really prove to people that we can achieve, help achieve um, kind of making molecules faster and more complex than was conceived of before. And that will just open up new possibilities, not just ac um, in commerce, but in academia. And that feedback loop, which is really important in life sciences, where you're basically designing new molecules, that are going to probe molecular mechanisms and, and in particular molecular pharmacology, you get some feedback around. And it just so happens that in Glasgow, the floor below me is molecular pharmacology and there are people with GPCRs everywhere. And I'm like, oh, we can, oh, we can compute that. Oh, we can compute that. Oh, you're playing with these cancer, colon cancer. Okay, yeah, fine, fine, fine. And so what I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do is demonstrate the ability to actually generate our own drug discovery assets in-house. At, will help others, right? So I don't, we're not going to become a drug discovery company per se. We're going to become the AWS for chemistry and give everyone a new type of infrastructure to build on. So I want people to go, oh, is that, is that a computable problem? Can you chemify that? Can you Google that? Can you chemify that? I mean, that's a pretty outrageous claim to make, but why not? Let's try it. Let's mm -hmm. become a household verb. It's certainly viable in the future to get there. I'm excited as a team scaling up to see that happen. But thinking of the future of computation, as we're talking about an AWS approach, I just want to get from your perspective as you're scaling, as you're growing, um, throwing some predictions out in the air, you know, when do you kind of see some of these tipping points happening um, in cost barriers, in access, in scale? Uh, and, you know, are there any key indicators or ecosystem milestones that you would point out as a, a marker for change? Like when this happens, this is going to be a big change or this will be a big leap for Chemify or chemical synthesis computation. 
Yeah, so there's, I think, one really important thing that we're doing that no one else would even think of doing is that we're trying to bring all of chemistry into one system, one kind of paradigm. So you have people go making nucleic acids or making peptides or making carbohydrates, great. Um, and, there's, and there's lots of flow chemistry and there's lots of combi chem and there's lots of platforms for specific Lego blocks. They can only get you so far. So what we think we're gonna be able to do in a reasonable amount of time is literally show we can cover 95% of chemical space up to, you know, say 20, 25 steps. When that happens, we'll be able to make molecules that are so complex and quantitatively inaccessible right now, it's literally like having a supercomputer in your pocket compared to having only one on planet Earth. The supercomputer on planet Earth, there may be one at Scripps or one at Cambridge where you've got these genius organic chemists who can make the most complex molecules known, but it'll take them three years and they'll get one milligram. Whereas Chemify will be able to make grams in literally weeks. Now, when you can do that, you think about what that's gonna do for kind of biochemistry, drug discovery, and understanding molecular mechanism, there's gonna be a tipping point. And that means that the, te the technology won't be just isolated to Chemify, it will start to become socialized, democratized, commoditized as it goes out, because wouldn't it be great if different research teams, like a, let's say a molecular biologist in Vancouver was talking to a molecular biologist in Berkeley, and they've got the same kind of computer in their lab, and they just exchange some code, and they basically make a molecule, and they're able to test their molecular hypothesis, and they're able to advance some critical biochemical understanding, which makes its way beyond the lab into the clinic and has real material impact. So th these are things to look for, be that will get faster and more complex and connect people across the biomedical community and making, making getting them access to any molecule they want pretty much on demand within the bounds of reason, right? We're not gonna do faster than light travel, but we're gonna do a lot. And I, and I think that, that there's a whole bunch of different dominoes that will tip over. I'm not gonna put timing on them because I always get it wrong. And people always tell me off. You know, I gave a TED talk many years ago when I said when I'd create an artificial life form and I failed to meet my own target. So probably I shouldn't do that too much here, but it's going to happen rapid, more rapidly than, than I think. Okay, yeah, no no, no need for timestamps. Excited to see what you're thinking as those key indicators um, in the space and changing. As we're continuing on this conversation of advancements in technology, as, as some of this gets unlocked, there's going to be new steps, new waves. I, I think back to computation in a way, computers, a lot has changed, obviously, since the Turing machine, right? And so, you know, the advent of semiconductors, the trillions of dollars that were put in over years, um, that slowly brought up um, the, the level of technology. As you're building out the Chemify platform um, overall, are there exciting parallel technologies or, or supportive technologies that you're excited that it's, you know, it's like Chemify had this, um, this would be something that would be a step up or this would change chemical synthesis. Yeah, there's so much. I mean, I think that we're going to discover new chemical reactions that the that, that, that academia have been looking for. It's kind of a bit of fun, right? Because people think I'm a terrible organic chemist and they're probably right. But here's the thing, if you take AI or any generative process, you have this box of known things you can only combine them in known ways. But because we've invented a Chemify Explorer that is able to explore and find entirely new reactions that we didn't know existed before, that means we can in, in, access molecules we didn't know we could make in that way. And what's going to begin to happen soon is that we're just going to make um, molecules entirely differently. We'll be able to combine them and think about maybe even doing chemistry in a cell and will change the way we even think about drugs. The other thing I think super exciting is gonna happen almost kind of by, by not magic, just by timing, is by having this standard and adopting that standard, our discovery system and our, our making system in the lab scale might just, might just become a manufacturing paradigm. Because why should you make entirely new factories, right? And this is anathema to most process chemists that are building new chemists, but I've got a little robot about this big that can make RNA and can make peptides. It could make the Pfizer vaccine. I wouldn't probably take it and it wouldn't make very much, but in principle, you can start when these technologies become so low cost, why would you make massive plant when you've made the printing press? So you know, rather than having a printing press where you put in new plates, 
you just have an ebook reader and a display. And the computer and Chemify and the computation is a bit like the ebook display for chemistry rather than having to change the plates, where you have this millions of dollars, you have to depreciate over 30 years, which means you have to make this molecule. So there's going to be that. And there's also going to be the way we change um, the way that molecules are verified and distributed. But that's an entirely new podcast. Entirely new one uh, for, for sure. And some some fun things. Um, closing off the episode here, I want to ask a few quick rapid fire questions just to cap this great conversation off. Thanks again, Lee, for joining us for just a great hour here. Bringing this back to the more fun question that we, we alluded to right at the start. Imagine it's 2050. Uh, could you describe the drug discovery development space from your perspective? I think it's like Mr. Fusion in Back to the Future 2, right? You know, he's like, the, you know, he goes, you know, there's not enough roads. Yeah. And it's like, no, where we're going, we don't need roads. Um, I think that drug discovery is going to be like so much faster. And the way that we access chemical space is going to be completely mind blowing. We're going to be making molecules that are just so big, we would just not think they're possible because of purity and the laws of physics. I think that um, we might not even, I mean, I think it's an outrageous claim to say that we won't need drugs, but I think that we will use chemistry to take part in molecular reprogramming. I wonder if in 50 years, we're gonna have a new revolution. I'm just making this up right now, it's just an idea, right? So I've never said it before. So you think about going from DNA, structural DNA, PCR, sequencing, deep sequencing and going all the way up. Now chemistry is way behind. Now let's say chemistry becomes programmable, 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 and get more and more and more. And suddenly we might even start to miniaturize computers. And what would be cool if we could a mini computer in your body? And it just made, you know, picomoles of compounds you needed on demand because it also had a sequencer built in. It's like, yeah, that's a problem. You know, I'm not going to go all Ray Cars what cause well and say there's a singularity. I'm just saying there's going to be a kind of molecular biology type event in chemistry that comes with computation, I hope. And if I can help make that happen in 50 years, I mean, I guess I'll be 100 and probably, well, probably alive forever because I've got my own, you know, nanoprinter, but I'll be older then. So I think that there is going to be a series of new revolutions powered by this technology, and it's really exciting. I can't predict exactly where it's going to go, but if we doesn't take a lot of imagination to see what molecular bio sequencing has done for molecular biology, so what is computation going to do for chemistry with molecular biology, as well as all the applications in non-biological, non-life sciences? I think it's going to be amazing. One, one dream I had, a typical joke I would say is like, you know, imagine in 50, 60 years time, you wake up, your personal genome assist assistant says, hey, I'm really sorry, you're going to get cancer in about seven years. But don't worry, you can go out to sleep. I'm going to work out what drug we need to make and we'll compute that and you'll get it and you, you can take it. It's personal medicine. And you and how it's not even it's not even a drug, right? It's a an inhibitor to stop your genomic degeneration from producing that error that's going to give you cancer in seven years. So there's all sorts of interventions you can think about if you have molecular control. But what computation gives you is top down molecular control, and molecular biology gives you bottom up. Bring those together with information. I can't even imagine what's going to be possible. It it's. The certain possibilities are endless with that connection, but continuing this off, still 2050, where is Chemify? You know, what challenges have we addressed? What diseases have we treated? Where are we going now? I mean, I hope by 2050, I mean, it's not that far away. We would have helped many drug companies discover new drugs made. Um, we would have changed the way that people collaborate across the industry, pre-competitively, competitively. We'll basically, I mean, like I say, the AWS is amazing, right? What has AWS done, almost done secretly, or not in secretly, just under the radar for the internet? If we can do that for chemistry, just in a few years and provide that new infrastructure so people get molecules on demand, then I think we're gonna be, um, it's, you know, Chemify is obviously gonna be a very big company, but more importantly than the size of the company, the way that chemistry has changed and interact and in working alongside molecular biology, that kind of thing that I talk about, in 50 years, we'll be well on the way, that vector in 2050, and that's super exciting. And who, who knows what the company's gonna look like? And, you know, my mission is to get the company to the point where we are producing that digital infrastructure for chemistry, doing drug discovery, doing materials discovery, enabling others to collaborate, having this kind of standards you, that you have across 
say biology and computer science and replicating that in chemistry and hopefully enabling a kind of revolution in molecular discovery and design a bit like people who are writing computer games because they grew up with personal computers and like i'm going to write a game now because right now it seems fantastical that you could make any molecule by 2050 it should be pretty much possible if it's physically feasible by the laws of physics i hasten to add and laws of chemistry you should be able to get there using computation i really hope so uh lee as we as we close the episode off any closing thoughts uh shameless plugs how can our audience learn more about your work and and follow you along um, i'm not very good at that i know it um yeah, you can look me up on Twitter and have an argument with me. That's fun at Lee Cronin. Um, obviously, go to the Chemify website, chemify.io. Um, we're looking for great people who share the vision to join our team. We are growing. Um, uh, if you if you're you know if you're a fantastic engineer and you know no chemistry, talk to us. If you're a fantastic chemist and you know no computer science, talk to us. I mean, I would I love finding amazingly talented people and unifying them on a mission that we can all share together so the only shameless thing i'll say is come join us we are growing and we need you um because <laughs> obviously all great companies are just composed of the great people that are willing to share that vision and and drag the past into the future by the hair absolutely just fantastic way to close this episode lee we're just so grateful for your time again. Thanks again for running us to the Chemify story, your own background. Um, hope to have you on in the in the near future again to grow as uh, Chemify grows again. But thanks again so much, Lee. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure.